Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be a good old will I buy it where I'm sharing all of my thoughts on these new and upcoming makeup releases and letting you guys know what I plan to pick up and what I am hard passing on. So without further ado, let's get started. We have got some exciting makeups to talk about today. Just looking at these pictures on my list, <laughs> There's some good stuff coming. Finally, some good stuff coming. So kicking us off with one of the items I'm most excited for, it's these new RMS Hydra Powder bronzers. Oh, yes. I don't know why these weren't in my makeup predictions video. This was really obvious when you think about it. RMS have done highlighters and blushes in this formula and so it's really obvious br that bronzers were coming but it didn't even occur to me for some reason i don't know why but oh when i first saw the pictures of these my prayers have been answered i adore rms's powder products their cheek products are just exactly what i crave that smooth glowy luminosity it's so flattering i love the glow it's never sparkly or chunky it's always smooth i've got one of their blushes on today bohemian girl i think and i just love them and they're so beautiful to look at which doesn't hurt these are just delightful to look at on the eye i'm desperate to get my hands on some of them the one of the shades looks extremely warm but the rest of them look quite neutral as well which really tickles my pickle i'm really hoping these are going to be absolutely fire as good as the blushes i'm 100 going to pick up like a couple of shades and i will let you know how i get on with them i'm very excited for these i'm just i know they're going to be just as lovely as the blushes and the highlighter <laughs> i also love how much rms really considers more mature skin that's so amazing i love that i know that the products are going to be kind to lines and texture and be flattering on more mature skin <gasps> I love them. I'm really rooting for RMS if you can't tell. Next up, let's talk about these Tarte Shape Tape Glow Blush Bars. These are a very hourglass-esque little trio, aren't they? So these are called blush bars, but it very much looks like there's a highlight and two blushes in each for different skin tones. I don't know. When I first saw these, these are my type of product. I love, if this had been hourglass, I'd have been all over it. Tarte is a brand I haven't got a lot from. I don't especially especially love the brand. There've been a lot of misses from them over the years. So I don't automatically get excited when I see something like this from Tarte as much as I would if it was Charlotte Tilbury, if it was Lisa Eldridge, if it was Hourglass, if it was Pat McGrath, I'd be all over it. With Tarte, I'm like, hmm, it's probably going to be skippable. But I think I would have grabbed one of these if it hadn't have been for another product that we're going to talk about later on in the video. For me, I think these are going to be a pass. Typically Tarte, it comes here a bit late. It's not widely available and easy to get. It just looks okay. I'm not a big fan of the brand, so I think I'm going to pass on these. They do look pretty wait for review if you're interested in them. But for me, for my collection, it's not going to be like, it's not going to be top of my list of things to buy, okay? There are other more exciting things coming, in my opinion. Next up, these are the Too Faced Bronzing and Sculpting Sticks. So these are described as an easy cream bronze and sculpting stick. I want to, I almost said skip. I don't know why. Maybe it's bin day. It isn't, it's Monday. Bin day is Friday, hello. These do look pretty neutral slash cool overall, apart from the chocolate caramel shade. That's the only sort of shade that looks really quite warm out of the four. I think these look okay. They look nice. They look very travel friendly. In the scheme of things and the list of like cream contour sticks, I don't think I'm going to be like running out to grab these. I will definitely wait for a view. And if they are wowing people, maybe I'll pick one up. But at the moment, I'm much more excited about the RMS powder bronzers than I am these. I really love my Westman Atelier cream contour stick and I've been using that quite a bit recently. I also love my Charlotte Tilbury contour ones and the Victoria Beckham one. I just don't really need another product like this. It's not one I use a lot and when I do I have other products and I'm very stuck in my ways. Okay old dog new tricks. You know how it goes. I'm like hmm I don't know if I need this. I Well I know that I don't. I know that I definitely don't need this 
Am I that excited about it? Not really. I'm just like, oh, okay, it's a, a cream contour stick. I mean, we've seen them done very many times. And again, Too Faced, a little bit hit and miss for me. So I think these realistically are going to be a pass unless the reviews start pouring in and it's the best bronzing stick we've ever seen in our lives, of which I, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, I'm slightly sceptical. I've already told you one of my predictions was I think we might get something like this from Pat McGrath this year. I hope that we do. So I'd much rather wait for that. Next up, something I am actually quite excited about. It's this new pink powder from Pat McGrath. Oh, I'm excited about this. I know it's just a new shade and not an entirely new product, but if you don't know, Pat McGrath's under eye setting powder was my holy grail for years. I've been through numerous of them. I own every shade there is. I loved it for a very long time. I still love it now. Okay, she hasn't died. I still love her now. I'm still using it very regularly. But a few months ago, the Givenchy pink loose under eye setting powder came into my life and I've barely looked back since. I've barely looked back for Pat's pressed powder in months. So it has been gazumped off of top spot. However, the reason being, I mean, they're both beautiful powders, smooth, flattering, lovely, brightening, very flattering on lines and texture, sets concealer gorgeously. What pips it about the Givenchy powder is that pink colour that really brightens up my under eye area and I just love that shade. So I feel like Pat heard that I had a new holy grail and went right that's it and she came for the Givenchy powder she wants to be back in top spot and I'm going to give her a shot I'm absolutely going to try this I'm intrigued to see who is the true winner out of the Givenchy and the Pat McGrath now that we have like the same color available they both have the pink brightening shade for my under eye area who's going to be the ultimate champion I'm excited I'm 100% going to be trying this I'll report back could Pat McGrath be back at holy grail spot I don't know but I am excited to find out next up let's take a look at this suku what are we calling this pre-summer 2024 collection I'm I don't mind telling you this little secret but don't tell the others okay I'm getting a little fatigued with Suku collections. I feel like as much as I have loved 90% of what I've tried from the brand, especially their cheek products, their highlighters and the blushes are gorgeous. Their lipsticks are gorgeous. I really liked one of their eyeshadow palettes. They are on the softer side, but they have some such interesting color stories. Really pretty, really nice formulas. I didn't love their foundation. But moving on. I just feel like a lot of their collections are, even when they're quite different colour story wise, the collections are always in this format. We get a couple of quad eyeshadow palettes and a couple of split pan blushes, as well as a couple of different shades of pretty much nude or peachy orangey shiny lip lipsticks. And that's what we've been getting for like every collection for years now. And I'm, I'm a little fatigued. I won't lie to you. I want something different from the brand at this point, every time a new collection pops up where it used to be really exciting because their color stories are usually quite different. And I know I love the formulas at this point, it's the exact same release with a slightly different color story every single time. And I'm now like, it's making me bored and I'm it's an easy pass for me because honestly, I just don't really want to try another quad or split pan blush from the brand. I want them to do something, I need something different from you. A bigger eyeshadow palette I would love to see or a blush palette, maybe something like a bronze blush highlight trio, something like that. I need something different from them because I, I'm, I'm losing hope. I'm losing my way with the brand. It's starting to be very repetitive and they, I, to give them credit, they do really change up their color stories, but it's the exact same format of products. You know what I'm saying? And now it's becoming an easy pass because I feel like we've done it to death at this point. Next up, let's take a look at Dior's summer collection. Dior have all sorts, all sorts coming our way. And a lot of it is a pass for me. Let's start off with the two new shades of Dior Backstage Blush. 
when I saw the first photo of these, I was like, those aren't new. Like they've done a, a repromote. They've done like a Pat McGrath where they've just included existing products in their collection. But those are apparently new shades. And I will say they do look slightly different. The purple is a little more lilac-y. And the, however, the like orange shade literally looks exactly like the coral they already have. Those are an easy pass for me. That lilac blush is never going anywhere near my cheeks. I'll tell you that for free. And then the orange one is too similar to the one that they already have. So I don't feel like I need it. So those are an easy pass. The eyeshadows, I'm not a big deal eyeshadow girl. I've never really loved one. They're always a little quiet. These color stories are just okay. Not that excited for them. There is gonna be a new shade of Glow Maximizer, which I am excited for because I love that formula. And I have the peachy shade, which is a nice sort of blushing highlighter on me very very subtle bit of color but beautiful formula so i'm really excited to get like a nude shade because that feels like the shade that i would use just as a highlighter and it looks beautiful perfect shade for me so i will definitely grab that but i think the rest of that collection is going to be an easy pass for me a lot is coming up a lot is coming out at the moment you've got to really be like tickling my pickle stirring my loins to get me to buy you and this all feels very like seen it all before don't really need it, easy pass, not really my cup of tea, apart from that Glow Maximizer, which is my cup of tea, with milk in it, builder style, left the tea bag in for just the right amount of time, splash of milk, delightful. Next up, let's take a look at Tom Ford's Summer 2024 collection. This is again, one where the overall collection is like, it, it's looking nice. These are some glorious photos here. Everything is looking very pretty, very summer. I'm liking that we're seeing something slightly different. It's not body heat. You'd have thunk it. The eyeshadow palette I don't think is going to be for me. I'm again, Tom Ford is not my typical like absolute favorite when it comes to eyeshadow formulas. And that color story I'm confused by. There's like a green in there for, for some reason. And the other colors, I, I don't know how that works together as a look that I'm gonna wear very often is my thoughts. So I'm gonna pass on the eyeshadow quad. The highlighter I thought was just again a whack that shade in that we previously released and call it part of the summer collection. But apparently this is actually a new shade of their Sole Glow highlighter. This is Nude Sand, that's coming home with me. I love that highlighter formula, but neither of the shades was quite perfect. And I feel like this one might be just looking at it. So I'm definitely gonna pick up that highlighter. I love the formula. I'm hoping this is gonna be my perfect shade. The lipsticks, I really like the Ultra Shines. I've only just recently got to know them. I've only just purchased my first one maybe six months ago and I love that formula and these colours are right up my street. Perfect for what I like in spring and summer. Undoubtedly I'll pick up one or two of those as well. They look glorious. The liquid lip blush in golden glitter. I feel like this is going to be an all talk no trousers kind of product. It's glorious to look at, isn't it? It reminds me of Golfschlager shots that I used to think were a good idea when I was like 18, 19. Um, so that's, you know, for the mems, for the memories. I'd like to look at that and try not to drink it. I don't think it'll be hard. The memories were not good memories, if we're just being honest. But that packaging and the gold flex looks stunning. What this really is going to do on my lips, I'm not sure. I feel like it's going to essentially be a clear gloss. So I don't know that it's going to be worth the very high price point. I don't know that I'm gonna use that a lot. So I'm going to force myself to make that a pass. So I'm gonna get the highlighter, a couple of the lip cheeks and the rest I'm going to close my eyes and pretend I don't see it. I suggest you do the same. Next up, NARS coming with this love collection. This is intriguing to me because you'd think this being the love collection, it would have been a Valentine's release, but I haven't seen this anywhere yet. So I'm intrigued as to when this is coming. What's happening? Love. We've missed, we've missed it. It was in February. That was love month. Maybe it wasn't ready in time, I'm not sure. So looking at this, this Ultimate Face Palette, this looks like we've got a couple of shades of their bronze contour products, a highlighter and then some eyeshadows. This looks nice, great for travel, but not anything that I need to run out and grab. I have a lot of NARS products. I've got their bronzers. I've got a lot of their blush palettes, which I love. I don't need this. It's nothing wildly different or exciting color story-wise. The quad... I really think it looks very pretty. It reminds me a bit of Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk Dreams quad. 
It's probably going to be softer shimmer wise. I think NARS's eyeshadows typically are very underrated and this looks like a really pretty soft romantic quad. I want to see swatches, which I haven't yet, but that is definitely a maybe for me. But this blush, the name of this blush is the like reflecting blush. That gives me good vibes. I don't know about you, but it sounds glowy and luminous and glorious. And if it is in that lovely sort of neutral understated shade, if that is a lovely buildable peachy coral luminosity, then count me in. It looks like it might be too light for me. I can't quite tell. I want swatches. It looks beautiful. I'm a big fan of NARS blushes and they're quite hard to get. I don't know what's going on with them if they're reformulating, but a lot of their blushes have been out of stock for a very long time and I love their sheeny, gloriously glowy blush formula. Absolutely love NARS blushes. And so I'm really hoping that is going to give me the like NARS blush glow that I've been starved of lately. So that blush is a yes. The quad is a maybe. The rest is an easy pass. And finally, these are the Rare Beauty Soft Pinch Luminous Powder Blushes. <laughs> Let me tell you, when I first started seeing the picture of these, be still my beating heart. These literally look right up my street. These get me excited. I cannot wait to pick these up and I absolutely will be picking up at least a couple of these. I just want to bathe in this all over my entire face. The highlighters were a little bit much for me. I tried the Rare Beauty highlighters and they were intense, okay? So I haven't really used those, but these blushes, oh, I just crave luminosity in blushes. Whenever I see a blush that is like the RMS blushes, the NARS glowy blushes, the Laura Mercier glowy, finished blushes. It makes me happy, it makes me excited, and I feel like we're a bit starved of them at times. You know, a lot of these brands who do them really well, Hourglass, we don't have that many shades. You know, they make us wait for Christmas and they whack them all randomly re-promotes in a palette, but we don't get many singles to choose from and new shades very often. We haven't seen new powder blushes from Charlotte Tilbury in years. I want new, glowy, glorious blush shades to choose from and here comes rare beauty out the gate with the answer to all of my prayers these look glorious i almost want to like just rub it on my cheek that's how lovely it looks i mean obviously i'm going to get the joy shade because that is just a joyful at least one other will be coming home with me. Maybe love. I mean, is that too much of a cliche for me to get the two peachy shades? Probably yes, but I am what I am, okay? I can't fight it. I may try to force myself to get another shade. Some of these swatches, these early swatches are kind of hard to read. I need some natural daylight swatches to start coming out, but absolutely, these made my heart happy two of those minimum coming home to live with me. And there you have it. Those are all of my thoughts on what I am excited and not so much for out of all of these new and upcoming makeup releases. Please let me know what you're excited for. There were several other products that I couldn't mention in this video for one reason or another. I don't want to get in trouble, okay? I'm a scaredy cat. But there is more coming, some of it this week. So hold on to your wallets, stay firm. Let me know what you're super excited for out of these new products, or are you passing on everything or grabbing everything? Please let me know in the comment section down below. But thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.